Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will discuss one of the few important topics in today's discussion. First, it will be about Nari Shakti Vandhan Constitutional 106th Amendment Act 2023. So, <coughs> today's uh, lecture it is the seventh of our series, which we started. Uh, which I started recently and my aim would be to complete uh, our main five subjects which include polity, uh, uh, economy, uh, international affairs and uh, environment and science and technology. These five subjects, uh, my aim would be to complete the current affairs of these five important subjects for our UPSC before our preliminary exam. So with regarding to that, this is our seventh discussion. And in today's video, I had brought five main topics, which include as following. First, it is the Nari Shakti Vandan Constitutional 106th Amendment Act 2023. It was passed by uh, passed by the parliament in 2023. What what are the it is pro, what it is for? It provided for the one by three reservation to women in the Lok Sabha and uh, state assembly and the assembly of NCT of Delhi. Uh, what are the key provisions of this act? Article 200. It amended Article 239A. In which it brought reservation of woman, one, reservation of one by three seats for women in the legislative assembly of NCT Delhi. It inserted Article 330A, which included reservation of one by three seats for women in the Lok Sabha, and uh, it amended Article 330, 30, where the reservation for SC and STs were given, and in that reservation they have to include the one by three reservation for women. In Lok Sabha. Similarly, it uh, inserted Article 332A. In it, we have reservation of one by three seats for women in the Legislative Assembly of every state, and Article 332 for the reservation of SCSC, SCSTs. For in them, it should be one by three should be the reservation for women. Then we have Article 334A. It contains provisions of this Act shall come into effect after delimitation after the first census takes place after the commencement of this act and this uh, when the first census census will take place and after that the limitation the delimitation delimitation process when it would take and its provisions would come on then so these are the main articles which we have to remember which may be asked in the exam and we should know these articles then moving to our Next slide, it is about why we need the reservation for women in legislature. We have under representation of women. It is said that it is said, yeah, it is established that only 14% of reservation, we only 14% of reservation of women is in legislature. So it is very much needed that women should be given more opportunities to represent themselves and to uh, go through an inclusive growth and <clears throat> to contribute to the economy. And if in this case we would see if we compare our country with our neighbor neighbors for including Nepal, Pakistan and Bangladesh, they have better reservation of women in their parliament than us. So it is very much important for us to to increase the reservation of women in legislature. And then we have second patriarchal nature of the political parties. You know, it is in the mindset of the usually in our mindset, this patriotic, patriarchal nature, the male chauvinism. So to overcome this we need their presentation of women in legislature. Then we have for gender sensitization of public policy. 
uh, it is needed for the representation of the woman for example if we would say any policy is made and for example if, even in science and tech if we, any uh, there is not proper gender sensitization for example if any medicine is made and trials are uh, uh, done for that medicine usually it would be checked on the male uh, male patients and it it would be concluded that it would be okay with females also so it is a it is kind of an example so to increase for this gender sensitization of public policy we need in any aspect whether it would be in science in society or anything we need women we should increase the representation of women then we have uh, as our representation of women in the local bodies has increased this has led to the huge development and huge development it had helped in curbing the crimes against women so this evidence definitely suggests that the representation of women should be increased further then we have nudging women led development to for that we need the representation of women so what are the concerns which are associated with this act it is against equality as it is said the reservation the idea of reservation is against the equality so same applies here it impairs the voter's choice when uh, there is a reservation for women uh, uh, one by th three seats are reserved for the women so it would definitely whether it would be reserved for women or any other category uh, it would impact the voter's choice then we have non uh, women are not homogeneous group like us system so uh, it is uh, said that a uh, woman should not be treated like that there should be equal grounds for both men and women so it is against it then also as in geeta mukherjee committee 1996 it was mentioned that a reservation for women in rai sabha and legislative council should be also given but in this amendment act there is no reservation of women in rai sabha or legislative councils then our second topic <coughs> it is about simultaneous elections you know uh, recently uh, today uh, right now when i am making this video out of this presentation uh, today or tomorrow this uh, recommendation would be given would be put forward uh, what we are going to discuss and back then union government formed eight member committee under the leadership of former president shri ramnath kovin to examine and make recommendation on simultaneous elections uh, if we would know what uh, if we were little bit discuss about simultaneous election it is for imposition or uh, uh, simultaneously conducting election of Uh, legislative assembly and conduct of states um uh, lok sabha and municipalities and local panchayats so conduct it is it is not about conducting every election on the same day but we can say conducting elections in this same phase it is about that so let us see what about simultaneous elections it is synchronizing the lok sabha state assembly municipalities and panchayat elections voters vote on same day in phase wise manner arguments for simultaneous election impact uh, those who support uh, this idea what they argue they argue that impact of governance due to frequent imposition of model code of conduct you know when election or their model code of conduct will be imposed and uh, development projects will stop it would impact the governance of the country so when usually we go through different election these model code of code of conducts are imposed and development hinders so to overcome this issue it is suggested that we should have a simultaneous election whatever happens happens in a single phase and rest of five years it would be develop it would be development led then we have when we have election it, it causes huge expenditure and uh, to overcome that we need to have a simultaneous election then we have prolonged de deployment of security funds usually when uh, there is an election year, year we, you would see different uh, security personnel in polling booths at different places so this uh, hinders the development also it hinders the civil life also and uh, it costs lot of time so 
to overcome this it is suggested that we should have a simultaneous election then it also disturbs the normal public life which is very which gets very much disturbed you know exams will many exams get cancelled and you know roads would be blocked because of rallies and other stuff so to overcome this it is said that uh, it should be uh, be very much simultaneous there would be only one phase in, in five year period and rest of the years would be free of elections and it would be development led and it would be opposite of all these stuff mentioned here now as we know whenever we argue for the betterment of some something when we have some positive points for uh, something in this world anything it also has everything has two sides so let us see what are its negative side uh, side is mentioned by its critic so what are the challenges in implementing simultaneous elections where it has huge operational challenge you know we have to go through money amendments uh, for this uh, you know constitution and statutory concerns in extending or curtailing the existing terms of some state assemblies to synchronize for example different for example this year we have elections and some states they might be having their period continuously for five years more or three years more so it would need huge implementation you know we have to amend money laws to synchronize synchronize these two things for example we need to amend article 83 article 85 article 172 article 174 and article 356 of the indian constitution which are related to elections and by elections and no confidence motion it also impacts the behavior of the voters for example usually it would for example when these simultaneous or uh, elections are going to held in a same year you know uh, for parliament election for example for uh, union elections or lok sabha elections we would want some strong personality to represent our country he might be of the different party but for our regional concerns we want different person to be and uh, we want uh, the person who would you know help in building our constituency they both might be of different parties so what would happen it would impact the voter behavior it would you know اس کا بہت ہی خراب امپیکٹ رہے گا سو اٹ ووڈ اٹ ووڈ امپیکٹ ریجنل پارٹیز کہ ووٹرس ووڈ چوز نیشنل انٹرسٹ اور دے آر دے 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 مائی ناٹ بی ہیونگ دی پراپر نالج اباؤٹ اٹ اینڈ دے ووڈ گو فار دی سیم پارٹی ان آل دی الیکشن دے ووڈ ووٹ فار دی سیم پارٹی سو اٹ ووڈ لیڈ ٹو دی اٹ ووڈ ہیو ویری بیڈ امپیکٹ آن دی ریجنل پارٹیز and we have uh, it you know it is not the new concept of having simultaneous elections it is not new to us but new it is not new to our uh, country but it is new to us because uh, it was the last time simultaneous election was held in 19 before 1960s so presently this generation has never seen such thing so it would have very uh, deep concerns on our uh, mentality many people would not be knowing what to do where to why they would uh, uh, it needs proper explanation to the people why they need to go to different booths for different voting and it would also impact on it would have impact on economy at the grassroots level for example during election many people get employed for those time all, uh, only and if elections are held for example municipality elections are held panchayat elections are held state legislative assembly elections are held and uh, uh, lok sabha elections are held when these four elections are held they get these uh, uh, these uh, they get jobs for uh, that time and somehow it helps them and if uh, this is uh, this thing happens in a simultaneous manner it would harm 
and harm their economy also. So it is said that it would impact on economy at the grassroots levels also. These are the few challenges mentioned by the critics of this. Yeah. Yeah. Now let us see what are the recommendations on implementing simultaneous elections. For example, Law Commission 1970th Report 1999, what it said, it said hold elections to the Lok Sabha and state assemblies simultaneously, but without the result, without declaration of the result until the period of one or uh, one or two is completed. When that period of the last assembly gets completed, it should be declared. And this period should not uh, increase. It is actually more complicated. The, uh, the report of Law Commission's 170th. Then we have Parliament Standing Committee on Personal Public Grievance and Law and Justice. It gave two phase. It also gave, <coughs> gave it a recommendation. What it mentioned, it said two phase recognized elections, holding of elections of some legislative assemblies at midterm of the when there is a midterm of the Lok Sabha. There should be one election and remaining with the end of the tenure of Lok Sabha and the tenure of Lok Sabha ends, the remaining elections should be at that time. So it basically said about the two phase synchronized elections. There should be two major elections in the country. Then about by elections, it said to all seats falling vacant in a particular year be conducted together on a predetermined date or time frame. Then we have Niti Aayog discussion paper 2017. It basically uh, said the same what Parliament Standing Committee said. It said two phase simultaneous elections based as uh, two phase simultaneous elections in case, and it further added that in case of premature dissolution of Lok Sabha or state assemblies, the term of the newly elected House should be for the rest of what would have been the original term. For example, if dissolution of the uh, Lok Sabha or the uh, state legislative assembly, then the term of the newly elected house uh, should be for the rest of the time. And also, uh, in the event of no confidence motion, simultaneously move a confidence motion for formation of an alternate government. <coughs> And it said fix two windows of one and a half months each for holding all by elections due in a particular year. Then we have Law Commission draft report 2018. It uh, this frame for, uh, for framework for synchronization of elections. It gave us three options in option one. It said advancing or postponing election timings in certain states such that elections to all state assemblies and Lok Sabha can be held together. For example, we have, it said about recommended about that we should advance in state in some states elections or uh, or we know or we should postpone in some states so we can synchronize the elections with the Lok Sabha. And the second option was conduct elections only twice in five years. And its third option is conduct all elections falling in a calendar year together. For example, in a calendar year, all the elections in every state should be held together. And about uh, uh, no confidence motion, it said that replace the no confidence motion with the constructive vote of con no confidence through appropriate amendments. We have artificial intelligence and elections. In it five, it is a role in elections, how it can impact elections and how it can play with the psyche of the people, how it can build the character of the particular party. Regarding that, five Swiss political parties have signed a code of conduct. Swiss party political party signed this code of conduct to limit the use of artificial intelligence in their campaigns for the federal elections. Let's see what is the role of AI in election predictive model. It can predict the behavior of the people, which party they are supporting, what are they liking, and which party is, uh, is gaining in constituencies. So it can predict it. Uh, social media analysis, it can understand the analysis of the social media. It can bring it forward. And people would, and political parties would frame their manifestos regarding, according to that. And we have, Personalization, AI can aid in 
tailoring communication for specific voters based on their interests, preferences, and traits. This can assist uh, candidates in uh, connecting with the audience more deeply. We have real-time data analysis. Campaigns may adopt their messaging and outreach methods in reaction to shifting conditions by using AI to evaluate real-time data on social media trends, sentiments, and influences. We have increased efficiency. We all, AI can track, track and measure the performance of, performance of various campaign activities such as advertising, canvassing, convey, and events. Uh, and it also increased, then we have an enhanced participation. Uh, AI also generates chance for participative democracy. So these are few of the roles which AI can play. It can predict, it can uh, have social media analysis, it can personalize, it can help in personalization, understanding the voters' mentality, what they want, and regarding that, election uh, political parties can uh, respond to, it will give us a real-time analysis data. It would increase efficiency and enhance participation because all, having all of these uh, qualities, uh, what AI brings, but it has some negative impacts also. Let's see what are negative concerns associated with the AI. It leads to manipulation. It can give deep fake videos, make deep fake videos. It can manipulate the elections and it can harm the personality of the people. It can it has very, for example, if we can remember that recently deep fake video of that Bol that Bollywood actress was made and it has very bad concern. It erodes trust in election when uh, different deep fake videos are brought in and uh, fake videos are generated and so fake manifestos are generated, generated by AI so it would definitely erode uh, the trust in election. And also, we don't have that enough regulation by which we can control these in such a way that we don't. We also can control it, and at the same time, we don't do do, do not uh, harness or impact the innovation. Then we have accuracy and data quality. We have cybersecurity vulnerabilities. That is one of the main issues with the AI in election. So it was, uh, in nutshell, this was about the manipulation, this was about the AI in election, how five civic political parties, they signed code of conduct, uh, uh, code of conduct agreeing to limit the use of artificial intelligence. Then we uh, roll off, we, we little bit discussed about the role of artificial intelligence in, <coughs> in campaigning for the elections. For example, how it would help political parties predicting modeling and all that stuff then we there are some concerns so let us see what are the way forward what is the way forward we have regulatory there should be enough regulatory frameworks made so that uh, this would be curtained and at the same time innovation should not be hampered then we should strengthen the election commission of india to reduce the risk of AI misuse by political campaigns, Election Commission of India should strengthen disclosure, strengthen disclosure requirements covering online communications. And also ECI should establish clear guidelines and ethical framework for the use of AI in elections, emphasizing accountability and responsibility. And we have innovation and detection. The government should ramp up efforts to promote innovation in the, uh, in the detection of deep fake voting information campaigns and strengthen infrastructure, infrastructure to protect elections from cyber attacks. Then adopt your response, continuously monitor and adopt to emerging threats and challenges related to AI in election. There should be adoptive response that how it continuously emerges and evolves. Say, similarly, we have to we have to adopt to, to the, these issues. We have to evolve with the evolving technologies. So the, these are few of the way forward we should we, which we should bring in. Then uh, we have personality rights. Uh, recently, the Lee High Court it granted protection to a famous Bollywood actor actor's personality rights for misuse by third party. So let us see what it is what it is about. 
personality rights it refers to the right of a person to protect his personality under the right to privacy or property you know about personality rights or their protection there are no there is or there is nothing not specifically expressed uh, and they are not specifically or mentioned in any statute in india but uh, it can be traced under uh, the right to privacy and right to property so if we would read this line as it is personality rights or their protection are not expressly mentioned in any statute in india that means in any law in india but are traced to fall under the right to privacy and right to property so let us see what are few uh, acts in it emblems and names prevention of improper use Uh, Act 1950. It protects unauthorized use of few dignitaries' names and symbols listed in its schedule. We have IPC. If negative reference or derogatory representation is made to any deceased person's reputation or their family, defamation suit can be filed filed under the Indian Penal Code. Then we have trademark law. It ensures the benefit to refrain others from using others' name unjustifiably. In addition. to personal right to sue them for their misuse of others name so these are the main three uh, laws under which this is personality rights are dealt with then we see what are the judicial interpretation in titan industries versus raj kumar jewelers case 2012 in it delhi high court stated that the personality rights include the right to not intrude upon their private space so right what personality rights and the right to not intrude upon their uh, personal space private space or solitude publicly disclose sensitive facts by publicly disclosing disclosing sensitive facts misrepresenting their image publicly or use the name to be unjustly enriched so it comes it is the violation of the uh, personality law then we had deepa jay kumar versus ai vijay case in it madras high court held that personality rights cease to exist after the death of the personality and cannot be inherited by their family members or legal heirs then we have another important case case it is arun jetli versus network solution private limited and others case 2011 in it delhi high court stated that the popularity or fame of individual will be no different on the internet than in reality and what is the, what are the challenges in enforcing personality rights in india for example it conflicts with the constitution you know media has a right to publish we have right to know so in article 29 if we can say it conflicts between the right to publicity media's right to publish and inform public about matters of public interest and citizens right to know about under article 119 absence of legislative framework there are not not so particular legislative frameworks which deal with the personality rights there is no existing comprehensive legislative framework to govern various facets of personality rights such as transferability of publicity rights uh, how it can be transferred from one person to another from man to it is higher then we have dark pattern receptive internet techniques and generate a or difficult to regulate which can infringe on individuals right to privacy and publicity <clears throat> so what conclusion do we make from it personality rights encompass a, a wide range of aspects from the right to privacy and publicity to the right to be free from defamation and harassment they are not only a legal construction but also an embodiment of the fundamental principle of human dignity and individual's autonomy which we should respect and the last article for today's discussion it is about the secretariat of the parliament parliament secretariat has been the custodian of procedure precedent and legislative knowledge of the two houses you know what are the constitutional provisions under article 98 each house of the parliament shall have a separate secretariat staff and article 187 for the state legislature in parliament may by law regulate the recruitment in article 98 parliament may by law regulate the recruitment and the conditions of the service of persons appointed to the secretariat staff of either house of the parliament it also allows creation of posts of 
post is common to both the houses of the parliament and article 187 for state legislature in council of states the Rai Sabha and the house of the people Lok Sabha came into existence in 1952 however the secretariat of the house of the people continued to be called the secret parliament secretariat and a new secretariat called the council of states secretariat was set up for the Rai Sabha the names of the two secretariats were uh, challenged in 1954 uh, were changed in 1954 to Rai Sabha Secretariat and Lok Sabha Secretariat. In 1954, these names were changed. Before that, uh, Parliament Secretariat and Council of State Secretariat. In Parliament Secretariat was for the Lok Sabha and Council of States. State Secretariat was for Rai Sabha. But in 1954, it was changed to Rai Sabha Secretariat and Lok Sabha Secretariat. Now let us see Lok Sabha Secretariat its structure. It consists of a speaker vested with ultimate guidance and control over the Secretariat. We have administrative head, Secretary General. We have recruitment and conditions of service governed by the Lok Sabha Secretariat Recruitment and Conditions of Service Rules 1955 promulgated by the President in consultation with the Speaker. The rules provide for the strength and composition of the Secretariat. All appointments to the post shall be made by the speaker. Speaker may delegate to the secretary general or any other officer of the secretariat his power to make appointments. Then we have a rise by secretary here. We have chairman rise by vested with the administrative control over the secretariat. Administrative head is secretary general and uh, recruitment and conditions of service governed by the rise sub secretariat recruitment and conditions of service rule 1957 promulgated by the president in consultation with the chairman similar to Lok Sabha. What are the limitations, absence of legislative framework? We have lack of autonomy. Uh, it is said that the secretary usually supports the executives and, <clears throat> and we have lack of independent cadre. Most of the senior posts are held by those nominated from All India Service, which adversely impact the independence of the legislature. So this was about today's class. I, it, uh, I tried to complete it uh, in very much nutshell. If uh, further, I would add one more thing about the functions of secretaries. Uh, first, uh, we would say secretarial assistance for effective functioning of the House of the Parliament, payment of salary and other allowances. It is done by it is under the function of the secretariat, servicing various parliamentary committees. We have secretary general aid and advice the presiding officer. We have uh, to prepare research and reference material and bring out various publications. It is its function, prepare and publish a record of the day-to-day -day proceedings of the house. So these are a few uh, six functions which I would repeat. Uh, assistance, payment of salary and other allowances, servicing various parliamentary committees, secretary general aid and advise the presiding officer, prepare research and reference material and uh, bring cut and bring bring out various publications and we have prepare and publish a record of the day-to-day -day proceedings of the houses so these are its functions i hope you like this video uh, please do like it if you are not liking my voice, at least, uh, you know, pause this video and uh, see the topics in it and take the information from that. And, you know, my aim is to uh, bring this knowledge and improve my skills also, I will be honest with you. Uh, it helps me in revising or something better. And uh, if anybody would come to these uh, classes, you know, and it may help them also. I know the quality is not that good yet, Con and but I promise by time it would be better. And in, from after our prelims, I would start very comprehensive lectures of quality. Then 
you know i would try to complete all upsc syllabus on this youtube channel this would be my goal till from june till december i would try to complete all the lectures all the topics related to the upsc prelims and mains also and i would um, and my aim would be to collect the data regarding the daily affairs daily and i would try to bring daily practice questions also on this channel this would be my aim so let us see where i would reach but at least i would try to bring these videos uh, i would try to bring these current affairs session for 2024 prelims i would try to complete it before the month of may i hope everybody who watches this find i i hope i would find, find you guys in good health and best of luck to everybody of you thank you very much